part of my presence YouTube channel. I'm here to do a review on the new Dave Chappelle comedy special titled 846, or rather 8 minutes and 46 seconds, which signifies the amount of time that Derek Chauvin dug his knee into the neck of George Floyd, ultimately killing him, while three other officers held him down while George Floyd was in handcuffs in police custody. Now I say that because we should never forget the atmosphere or the time in which this comedy special was released. Okay, now here's the thing. It's not really a, a comedy special. I mean, most times when you buy your tickets and you go to see a comedian, you dress up, uh, you know, you, you, you take a date, you have a seat, you get some drinks, and the whole intention is for you to have a good time, laugh at yourself, laugh at others, laugh at the crazy stories in the world. But in this case, with everything that's going on, with the protests, uh, with the murder of multiple uh, uh, unarmed black people, a lot of, there's a lot of injustice that's going on in this world right now, especially in the United States. So for him to drop this particular comedy special in this atmosphere, in these times, a lot of people would want to laugh. A lot of people would say, you know what, I want some escapism. And here is the best comedian at this time and probably ever. Yes, I want to come and I want to laugh with him and have a great time. But instead, what he does... He decides to have a serious conversation. He decides to have a dialogue. And you have to think, what other comedian could get away with this? I can't name any comedian or anybody where I buy a ticket and sit down and have them lecture to me or have them talk to me in a serious manner. But this is why Dave Chappelle is probably the best comedian because he's able to and his his comedy style is always a conversational comedy style right so for him to have this comedy special and for him to use his platform to have a serious discussion with the audience with america people are captivated they're excited they've given their full attention and they walked away feeling great about this experience they've been enlightened i know i have i know i was enlightened and here's the thing, here's probably the key for it, why this works, is the fact that it was only 27 minutes long, he was able to get in, get out, he was able to speak directly, he was concise, he was hard hitting, and he's able to make his mark, and I think that was the key to the success of this particular special. Now here's the thing, when you think about Dave Chappelle, he's not really an interesting person, he's not on social media, he's not in, in the blogs. Uh, he lives pretty much an isolated life in Ohio of all places. So he doesn't really hobnob with celebrities. And I don't think that's his intention. He pretty much lives a quiet life. Yet, when he tells these stories, the way how he interweaves all the different uh, tidbits and facts. Uh, he brings in historical uh, events that occurred, current events that have occurred, and he's able to pretty much tell his story and connect it with his life. You kind of realize that he's actually lived an interesting life. You know, the, the fact that he's met OJ Simpson three different times, you know, the fact that he's in a manifesto, uh, you know, that was written by Christopher Darner. I didn't know that. And the manifesto was online for everyone to read and that was something that I never thought of. And he makes you, and this is the one thing I noticed, he makes you want to do research, right? The way how he, he discusses certain things, he makes you want to do research and, and, and look into whether or not what he's saying actually happened. Because some of it was crazy, like the fact that he was in an earthquake, the fact that the uh, Christopher Dorner manifesto came out around the same time it was supposed to do uh, an award show, I believe it was the Grammys, and the fact that they wanted to give him a police escort. Meanwhile, it's really the police officers who should be worried. So when you hear those stories, you start to realize that Dave Chappelle actually leaves a pretty interesting life that he really doesn't, doesn't tell you about until there's a special and then he divulges that information to the audience in a conversational piece. 
and this is why this special is amazing. Now I want to just add a few things as to what I liked about the special. Dave Chappelle showed a lot more emotion in this particular special. He's a laid back guy, his comedy like I said before is conversational, he, he doesn't really get riled up but this particular special he showed a lot of raw emotion, uh, he was fidgeting a lot in his seat, it's almost like he couldn't hold things back and he let it all out. Uh, and you know he exploded when he stood up and he started saying different things he was able to to pretty much hit home how he felt and a lot of it was frustration and not frustration because he didn't know what was going on it was frustration because he knew exactly what was going on but for whatever reason no one else did right whether it's Candace Owens whether it's Don Lemon uh, whether it's social media whether it's uh, the white audience uh, so these are the things that was really brought out uh, that was different from his previous comedy specials. He showed raw emotion and I enjoyed it. It was good to see. Uh, it was good to see someone who's known as the laid back weed head actually, you know, stand up and show emotion, probably more emotion that he's ever showed at any other point in time in his career. What really hit home for me as far as the emotion is when Dave discusses the incident with Derek Chauvin or the murder of George Floyd and he pretty much sums it up as far as what's happening in this world today is the fact that this is not about one cop right this is something that's been going on for not only this year previous years previous decades for generations not only in the US but across the entire world and people are fed up and I think because this was done in broad daylight and it was recorded from start to finish I think people can no longer ignore this. This is something that was a wake up call. And I think what we're seeing as far as the protests, whether it's the riots, and it's not just in the US. There's protests in France, there's protests in the countries in Africa, there's protests in Canada, there's protests around the world. And I think people have started to realize that the way that people have treated black folks, not only the US, but across the world, and the way how they refuse to look and recognize our humanity is at the heart of this issue. Because I don't see how you could ignore the fact that people are pleading for you to stop. George is pleading for you to stop. And you don't think to yourself, this man might be a father, this man is a brother, is a son. And you don't feel that if you were to take this man's life, the damage that it would cause, the ripple effects of this man no longer to be able to see his children, to raise his children, that never came across, not just to the one cop, but all the cops that were there. He never thought about that. And this is what he hit home with his raw emotion and what he discussed in this particular special. There is a clear problem in America and it's not new, it's old. And it seems to be ingrained in its inception. And it's something that needs to be addressed. Another interesting thing that he brings up in the special is the fact that you have Christopher Dorner, you have Micah Johnson, and you have, uh, I'm not sure the name, but the other person in New Orleans. They all decided to pick up arms and go after police officers. And they're all from the military. And he was saying that people join the military Again, probably from 9-11, right? Because that's the era that, that, that people enlisted into the army based on what occurred as far as 9-11 attacks. But people joined the army to fight terrorism. So when they're at home, they come back home in the United States and they're seeing acts of terrorism on television in their own backyard. They decided to pick up arms and do what they thought was right in regards to retaliating against police officers because they looked at and they perceived police officers to be terrorizing neighborhoods. And I thought that was very interesting because Christopher Dorner, when you look at his story, he did everything right. He did it by the book. He waited, he had patience, he thought that he would be reinstated. He followed all the protocols and to the point where there was no more options for him to appeal the decision that was made as far as kicking them out of the force. And that's when he decided to take his revenge or to get justice. So it's very interesting that he brought it up because nobody talks about Christopher Dorner anymore. Nobody talks about Mika Johnson anymore. And these things need to be discussed because 
People need to understand why are these things happening in America? It's not a coincidence, okay? A lot of these events that are happening in America, it's because of who and what America is. And I think Dave Chappelle laid it out perfectly and he made the audience understand exactly what's at stake here in that country. And then between the serious dialogue, there were some pretty good jokes. Probably the best one was the one about Candace Owens, where he said he wanted to kick it in another regions, and it probably didn't smell too good. He doesn't know for sure, but if he ever finds out, he would tell. He would tell like Azalea Banks, and that was pretty funny because that Azalea Banks reference was a very recent story where Azalea Banks came out and said that she slept with Dave Chappelle. Now. Of course, he didn't deny or confirm the story, but he shouldn't have to. I mean, it's Azalea Banks. She's really not known for being truthful in most cases. But it's very funny how I was able to weave that in and get that shot there in between this serious conversation. And that's really the genius of Dave Chappelle. He's able, like I said, to interweave these stories and make it all make sense in the end. And speaking of the end, in the end, Dave Chappelle got his message across, which was it's not his place for him to speak up and lead this particular revolution, if you want to call it that, or a particular movement. He is very comfortable taking the back seat and letting the younger generation take the wheel and ride and drive the car. And he doesn't want to interfere. He doesn't want to influence. He's there on the side. If you need help, you could come to him. You could ask for advice. He can provide some insight, which he did with the special, but he's not one who's going to override the movement and try to steer it in a different direction. Like he said, he's going to let the streets speak for themselves and they're doing a damn good job doing it. And so did Dave Chappelle as far as his job in taking care of the special and tackling these tough issues in these turbulent times. So if you ask me, great special. I loved it. Short and sweet, concise to the point. I look forward to a next special from Dave Chappelle, part of my presence YouTube channel. If you like what I said, if you agree with me as far as a review of 8 minutes and 46 seconds, like, comment, subscribe. But until next time, peace.